Today we're taking a look at and breaking down NetStat. Let's dive right in. What's going on guys? Today we're going to take a look at NetStat. This is a built-in Windows utility that's very useful if you're troubleshooting uh, possible network connectivity issues. That could be like between applications, between computers, interfaces, things like that. So what we're going to do today is we're going to open a terminal as admin. You can also do an admin command prompt or admin PowerShell. I'm running Windows 11, so I'm going to use the terminal. And you don't have to run this as admin, but when you get into some of the flags um, or switches in NetStat, it will say you can't run it without admin permission. So just be aware of that. I'm going to zoom in the text here a little bit. And what is NetStat? So NetStat is stands for Network Statistics, and it's a very powerful tool, again, built into Windows, and it's a, a good first step to kind of identifying and troubleshooting possible network connectivity issues. Um, if you've been in IT, whether that's desktop, network, sysadmin, chances are you've dealt with, um, you've had calls or tickets where people are saying, well, I think it's a network issue because this application is not doing X, Y, Z, or this application can't connect, or whatever the case is. Uh, I'm not pointing fingers, but people tend to blame the network. They kind of gravitate towards that as the default route. Like, it's got to be the network. It's not working. Sometimes it is. Most of the time it's not, especially if you have a solid network, um, and if you know your network and how it's configured. But either way, you pretty much have to prove that it's not the network before vendors and things like that will move on to the next step, right? So this is a good way to do that. If I can show them, look, man, the app's connecting. I see a, a socket connection on this port from this IP to this IP. Um, where do you want to go from there? <laughs> so this is a good tool because ping can show you, yeah, it's reachable, but did the, at that next level, the protocol level, did it actually form a connection? Is there something blocking it, right? Um, and of course, after that, you can get into Wireshark and things like that and get a packet capture and really, really get down to the nitty gritty. But again, this is more like that first or that next step after a ping. All right, so that's just kind of a super high level of what it is and when you would be using it. So let's take a look at the command itself, netstat. If we just run it by itself, this is going to show us all of our active connections. And it'll give us the protocol used, the local address, the remote or foreign address, and then the state. So again, this is just the default. It's going to show all the active connections. So we can hit control C to get out of there. I can do CLS to clear my screen. And then let's ask NetStat what switches it has. So we'll do NetStat space forward slash question mark. This is going to give us a whole bunch of stuff, guys. I'm not going to cover all these because it'll be a super long video, but I'll give you some of the ones that I commonly use. And then you guys let me know um, what switches are you using on a normal basis with NetStat. So I use A a lot. This will show all the active connections and listening ports. Listening ports is very important because if you have, let's say, an application, an interface, something like that, that's supposed to be able to accept connections on just some random port, let's say uh, 5020. If you don't have, uh, if you run this and you don't have something listening on 5020, the remote application or remote party is never going to be able to form that connection, that socket, right? Because your computer is not even listening on 5020. That's just a random example but a use case for sure. And then in, I like to use in because this will give me everything in numerical format. Without that, sometimes you'll get the protocol name, uh, example, HTTPS as opposed to 443. So I like to see, th as a former network engineer, I like to see things in port numbers. Um, totally up to you, but this can be useful when troubleshooting, again, with like a remote vendor or something like that. Like what port is it supposed to connect on? Okay, I see mine is listening on that. And then another one that I'll use from time to time is the uh, B. This will give you the actual, if it can find it, it'll give you the executable name that's tied to that connection. So let's say like Chrome is has an open socket or connection to an internet address, right? Like a, a public IP out there. It'll tell you, okay, your computer's IP is connecting to this uh, public IP on 443, and the application that's doing that is chrome.exe. So that can be very useful as well. Um, so those are three common ones. There's a bunch of other stuff. You can view the routing table here as well. Um, if you guys didn't know, the routing table, or your computer has a routing table, just like a router, uh, not as 
uh, complex as an actual like Cisco router, but you do have a, a local routing table. So you can like inject routes and change routes and things like that if you want to get tricky. But yeah, those are some of the common ones. There's a lot of other stuff you can do with Netstat. Uh, but this is more of an intro video, high level video. So let's let's run a couple of these commands and then I'll show you a couple tricks too. And we'll just go from there. So again, CLS, I'm going to do netstat-na this time. This will show me all of my active connections and listening ports with numerical output. So numerical output, I mean the port numbers here, right? So you see I have a bunch of um, TCP connections on 443. It'll show a lot of these closed weight as well until these actually completely close out. They'll stay in a closed weight state. But there are some established as well. So this is probably Chrome. I don't think I have any Edge instances open. So yeah, these are probably Chrome instances where my IP is connected to a public IP on port 443 and we have an established state. So you see quite a bit going on there. And then you have all these listening ports. So if your device is able to accept connections, for example, I have RDP enabled on my computer. So I see here that 3389 is listening. So if I were to uh, try to RDP to this, at least from a protocol level and a network level, I would be able to um, form a socket connection on port 3389, which is the default port for RDP. So this can come in handy. Um, I'm just going to give you an example. Let's try to find something that's not 443. Okay, 5223. Let's say you get a call and someone says, hey, this application is trying to create a connection to this server on port 5223, but the app's not working. It's got to be the network. I've seen this before. It's always the network. Okay, cool. Let's find out if it's the network. 5223, right? Okay. So we're going to clear the screen. I'm going to run that same command again, netstat-na. And if you don't want to search through all of that um, output, you can do a find str. So this is short for find string. This is like the equivalent to grep in Linux, if you're familiar with that. And I'm just going to do find string 5223. Okay, now you just send a screenshot of this to the vendor. And you say, oh, you're coming from this IP here, right? Okay, cool. Well, I see that my computer was able to form a connection on 5223 and it's established to your IP address. So just one example, right? Uh, this would be our computer connecting to that computer. So maybe he calls and says, hey, um, a user or your server is not connecting back to us on 5223 and that's why the application isn't working or that's why the interface is not coming up. Okay, cool. Well, I just showed you that I do have an active established socket to your IP address on that port. So let's move on now. It's not the network. Maybe they want to go deeper and look at a PCAP or a Wireshark uh, packet capture after that. But this is a very good starting point. Kind of puts the ball back in their port, in their court and says, hey, look, network solid, dude. Move on. So that's a good one. Um, another good one, like I said, is uh, netstat-nba. This is one that I call netstat ballin, like ballin because NBA, obviously, Basketball, National Basketball Association. Um, I'm kind of weird like that. I like to come up with uh, stupid little uh, acronyms or whatever that, that help me remember things, right? So that's that ball in. Um, and then we can just run that. And the B should tell us what executable is tied to some of these connections. So we should see some Chrome action in here. Yeah, so here's some Chrome action for all the 443 stuff. Uh, but if you have an obscure one, right, you'd be able to see, oh, okay, this is that guy's um, application for his interface or whatever that's connecting on that port. So this is another good one that I use a lot of times to help me identify connections, identify applications that are using connections, things like that. All right, guys, the last one I want to show you here was the interval. Um, it's interval command, inter interval parameter, I guess you'd say in netstat. So let's take a look at the help document again. So to redisplay the selected statistics, so whatever flags you throw it, uh, pausing for the interval seconds between each display. And then you can, pr uh, excuse me, you can press control C to stop the um, redisplaying of those statistics. So if you don't do this, it'll just display it once and then the command's done. So let's take a look at that. 
let's say we do netstat dash na and then followed by the interval so you don't actually type interval or flag in, or dash interval anything like that you literally just put the amount of seconds so let's do every three seconds if i can find three there we go so this can be helpful if you're working with um could be a colleague could be a vendor or something like that and you just want to get an updated list every you know you probably wouldn't do three seconds maybe every 30 seconds or something like that to see if that um, connection has established so another useful tip for um, the netstat utility all right guys so those were some common uses for netstat again this is a very handy tool if you're a network engineer, network admin, even a desktop technician. Um, you can be that first line of troubleshooting and trust me, your your sysadmins and network admins and network engineers will really appreciate you going the extra mile to uh, gather any of this network related information for them. So there's nothing that I like enjoyed more when I was a network engineer or a you know system admin, whatever, when a desktop person would um, gather all this information for me and put it in the ticket before sending it over. I was like, wow, this guy, this guy kicks butt, man. He's awesome. He's probably going to be a uh, future network engineer. Look at him going the extra mile, right? So trust me, it's it's much appreciated when you do that type of stuff. Gather all the information, uh, send it up to your, to your network team. It goes a long way. Plus, you're on their radar then, right? You're like, whoa, this guy... He's got some skills. He's got some interest. Um, maybe I'll take him under my wing, right? Something like that. So, all right, guys, let me know what you think. Uh, do you use Netstat? Um, if so, what scenarios are you finding yourself using Netstat for? What switches are you using? Did I overlook any of the common switches that you use on a daily basis? Let me know, guys. All right. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you found it useful, please consider hitting the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, leave me a comment again, let me know what you guys are using Netstat for, let me know what you think, and then share this video with your friends guys, spread the word around, the IT unicorn is trying to get to 10,000 this year, the IT unicorn, look at me in the in the third person there, <laughs> we're trying to grow the channel to, to 10,000 subscribers for the year, that is my goal, again I know that's a big goal, but um, if you don't if you don't aim big you're not gonna hit big right so that's kind of what I'm shooting for all right guys I hope you all have a great day until the next one take care